Hey everyone, and welcome back. Um, no pile of mail this time, because um, I'm actually recording this from the past. I mean, really, I mean, how do I put this? From the before, no, from after I've opened all those packages, uh, but still before you're seeing this, obviously. Um, that's because the mail has been trickling in very slowly, and I have to open packages for this 3D printer project. Uh, so I'm opening them, recording them one at a time, and then assembling it all together after. Um, yeah, so if I say stuff like, if I say stuff that's not in context or whatever, uh, you'll have to excuse that. It's just going to be the nature of it. Uh, so without further ado, let's open the first package. First one up is this one here. Um, I'm nervous about this one because I spent a lot of money on this. Um, yeah, so uh, 8367. Um, this is one of the few packages that I have put the tracking number in the postal system like every day to track its progress. Um, it was actually fairly slow to arrive so it made me a little nervous that it wasn't going to because uh, simply put this is a lot of money for what it is but if it works properly it uh, it should have some large e positive effects okay so some of you will know immediately what this is and some of you will not but that's okay. Uh, Big Tree Tech is a company that deals in uh, 3D printer parts as well as some other things. And this one here, this is, oh look, they put a little rubber ducky. There was a, uh, there was a post that not everyone got these, so there we go. I think the valve is a little, you know, not so great. But uh, yeah, this is a 32-bit 3D printer board, this is the SKR uh, 1.4 Turbo. And there you have it. I will give you some close-ups of this in just a moment. But uh, yeah, this thing is uh, fused, it's got SD card, it's got um, uh, Wi-Fi capabilities. More on that, you know, some other time because, uh, yeah, apparently you don't need their branded Wi-Fi stuff for it to work. It's got a, a micro SD card, a uh, bunch of jumpers here, a bunch of jumpers there. It's a pretty nice looking board, I have to say, right off the bat. So the SKR 1.4 Turbo, that's the, um, the one with the higher uh, clock speed. And, you know, I figured if I'm going to build, you know, spend all this money building a custom machine, and look, another ducky. This one's got a working valve. This valve, not so, not so much. Um, yeah, I figured I would get the higher end version, the highest end one that uh, that's available right now. And the diff the price difference wasn't very big. Like it was something like 20, 30 bucks difference. And if you're already spending all this money. Might as well go a little bit further. This is another option that I grabbed with it. Uh, this is the uh, TFT module, which is great because it kind of looks like it might be identical, the module itself, to uh, this guy here from a previous mailbag. Yeah, that looks like the same screen to me. But uh, yes, yeah, so this is a touch screen three and a half inch LCD. What's great about this is that uh, it can carry, it also has a SD card slot. This one's a full sized one, not the mini one. Um, it's got the plug-in for the ESP for Wi-Fi. It's got USB, so you can actually use a thumb drive to uh, transfer stuff. But what's great about this is that this sort of includes an, an opto or octoprint sort of interface uh, by itself. So you don't need to add a Raspberry Pi. This should be the whole solution. Um, I do want to play with the Octoprint, but that'll be for, you know, uh, I have Raspberry Pi and I can use that for a different board. 
this one here all comes included and on top of that this is the uh, this is another part of the expense here is that these are fancy motor drivers these are the TMC 2209 I believe let me see yeah TMC 2209 version 1.2 so these guys instead of being like the A4988 and equivalent boards these guys actually use um, they use SPI communication so they actually do a chip to chip communication and therefore uh, this board here can contact this board directly and you can actually change settings on the fly there are no adjustments that are needed um, manually you can you can do everything just from the even on the web interface on this thing so everything's adjustable um, they also have um, no limit switches they're compatible with being their own limit switches they're just going to check the current ramp to do the limiting this tech is pretty damn good I think this is the best sort of off-brandy Chinesey setup that you can get you can get more expensive boards but apparently this one does a lot of what those other ones do and um, yeah I'm uh, I'm pretty thrilled to have this in my hands this was a big purchasing decision uh, I mean a hundred bucks is nothing to sneeze at but I should get something that's high quality out of this let me zoom you in so we can take a closer look at these boards starting off with the main board so up here is where your drivers will sit in the TMC actually it's compatible with all sorts of uh, drivers just by moving these uh, jumpers to either this side the other side or removing them all together uh, this is a, a fairly high spec processor NXP LPC 1769 FBD 00, uh, 0100 um, 32 bit processor uh, I believe this one is a little bit higher speed because it's the turbo so they use a, a higher frequency on the crystal I see 12 megahertz something like that maybe more I'm not sure anyways the point is this thing is uh, very quick it should be able to do the complex processing required to do sort of like core XY for example uh, it it does you can run Marlin farm firmware on here I'm not sure if it comes with the uh, Marlin firmware but uh, yeah this thing should be great the 32-bit board allows sort of more computations per second because instead of using uh, one 8-bit word it uses it can do four uh, 8 bits 8-bit 8 calculations at the same time or it can go with a lot more precision depth um, yeah pretty cool thing it's got some fairly big MOSFETs on here I'm looking um, WSK 220N04 so I'm guessing that's uh, probably gonna be like a yeah this guy's probably a high high current draw here and then there's two on the sides here which are probably lower current WSF 3085s um, the only thing is I'm not sure if this thing will actually run on 24 volts um, this is what I'm a little concerned about I need to make sure that this thing can handle 24 volts if not we are running at 12 volts which is not ideal uh, I might actually just go 24 volt and then have the, uh, the the heating elements run at 24 through one of those little MOSFETs on the side I don't know this is all up for inter up for decisions later on the most important part right now was to get the parts so that when I'm ready to go I've got them here there's also a little auxiliary board that fits in here somewhere that provides um, a switched uh, a switch mode 5 volt rail and uh, this one doesn't have it didn't, didn't come with it it's an accessory uh, but I might just build my own we'll, we'll see I don't think it's entirely necessary to use their proprietary stuff then for the uh, TFT module there's not too much to see here there's a buzzer here there is a rotary encoder with a push button and there's a reset button there I think this you you usually put in a case recessed and uh, reset it with a pin so that's nice on the backhand side there is 
an STM 32F207. So STM 32, 32 bit processor simply for the touch interface stuff. Um, it's got expansion slots. It's got room for your ESP Wi Fi. There's the USB. There's the full size um, SD card slot. And yeah, there's a, there's a whole bunch of space for expansion here and other modules to put on, especially because it's an STM32. This is more processing power than I use in my regular uh, projects, and that's just for this board. This board here handles its own processing. Last but certainly not least, the TMC2209s. I'll flip one around so you can see. The actual chip is sitting on the bottom there and it'll slot right into uh, these slots here. Um, they even have like longer pins, if you can see there. They have longer pins so you can uh, run end stops directly from here to there if you needed to. Um, and all, like they're, they're basically breakout pins so you can pull things off the board. There's two there, there's three there. Uh, and they come with these uh, nifty heat sinks here. I have to decide, I'll probably put them, you know, sort of this way, or sorry, this way, so I can flow air across all of them, because they'll all be sitting in the same direction, so I wanna flow air sort of this way, but I might also just generally flow air downwards over the SKR entire board. So, yeah, was really anxious to, to get this in my hands, was really afraid that they would be lost in the mail. This was kind of an expensive purchase, AliExpress uh, does not fill me with the most confidence, but I just decided to go for it. It it looks like no, I've got all my yeah, I've got all the pieces here, and this is five stepper drivers. So uh, if you think about it, it's X, Y, Z extruder and an extra one. That extra one uh, will likely be for either a dual Z or who knows, maybe uh, we'll go dual extruder. Everything is up in the air at the moment. But yeah, that's the deal with these things. Let's go on to the next one. Next one up is this one here. Uh, the problem with this one is that none of the numbers match anything um, that I've ordered. Uh, but I know it has to be for this because it says printer parts and screws. And there's two things in here. It says uh, $6 US, but that's, that's just not true. Um, I specifically pay for e-packet shipping in these trying times because they come relatively soon. However, I've been finding that the AliExpress sellers have been hanging on to packages for a while before sending them out. Okay, yeah, this is definitely, this definitely has to do with 3D printing. Um, let's take a closer look at what these things are. I'm actually pretty excited to have this in my hands because what these are, these are BL Touch auto bed leveling sensors, but not so. They are um, a knockoff. Can't even open the package. They're a knockoff uh, called 3D Touch. Jesus, that took a lot of effort. Um, they're a knockoff called, called 3D Touch. So they do the same thing as the BL Touch. Um, but basically, as far as I understand it, um, you've got these wires coming back here towards the main board, and it actually comes with the extensions as well. And this thing rides on uh, your your carriage, and it has a solenoid in here, which would it'll activate. It'll come down, and the the head, the z-axis, will come down to touch here. And the, I think the, just the movement of it captured in the coils here will detect the Z axis like that. I did see on the listing that you're not supposed to pull on this thing uh, on the plunger here while it is unplugged. Um, you're only supposed to actuate that with the uh, main board itself or else I would be doing that. But yeah, these were uh, kind of expensive. It came up to uh, $30, uh, $26, I think, for two of them. And the reason I've got two is because uh, the custom 3D printer will have one of these for sure. But I want to upgrade my uh, my Tron C, my Tron XY printer with this as well. So I got two 
because one will be uh, housed in the new 3D printer and the other one will be on my current Tron, Tron XY. The, uh, the deal with these is that the Tron XY has auto bed leveling, which is what these things achieve, but um, the problem is it's inductive and when you change the surface material, so if I put a piece of glass, it won't capture the glass and it'll run right into the glass. If I put a piece of spring steel, uh, then it'll capture it way too high and it, it won't it won't print properly. And if I put a piece of like PEI or some sort of sheet on top, it'll also uh, won't pick that up. It'll go right into the bed. So yeah, this thing is a physical touch. It'll literally touch the bed. And no matter what surface you put on, this thing will be sensitive to because it has no inductive, no sight problems, none of those things. So yeah, I'm going to give this a shot. Uh, some people are saying that these things are total crap. However, I've seen reviews and the BL Touch, although more precise, uh, these, these things seem like they're more, they're just precise enough and repeatable enough that it's actually going to be just fine. So I took a risk on that, but I think it's a relatively small risk. And uh, they also came with extension cables. Might need longer ones because uh, don't forget my 3D printer is going to be huge. So got some extension cables. I might run my control unit on top of my machine. We'll have to see. But yeah, pretty neat. I'm glad these things are in. So we can go on to the next one. Actually, before that, just a little bit of a close-up view of these things. I have to say, too, they're pretty small and pretty light, and they have convenient mounting holes. So I think designing a bracket for this um, will be quite easy. And uh, honestly, I so, so badly want to pull on this thing simply because they said don't. Maybe I'll wait because, uh, yeah, this was, uh, it was quite a bit of... Um, budget adjustment I had to make to to fit everything I wanted into this 3d printer build pretty neat on to the next one next one up is this one here quantity 2 printer parts and screws and this was uh, 3408 plus uh, 544 order November 26th arrived December 18th um, yeah a little bit of a story about this one, but let's open it first. Okay. And this one. So yeah, let's take a look at this first because it's the most interesting part. So this here, this is a BMG extruder but it's a BMG Extruder V2. So basically, this thing is a, a dual drive extruder. So it has two um, has two gears. So basically your uh, stepper motor fits on the back here. It spins this gear here. I think I should be able to open it. There we go. And that spins these two gears here. You can see like that and these both these gears grab onto the filament here on both sides and feed it through this little cone and you see the cone has like a point that's so it fits super tightly to the end of the gears here and feeds it into the extruder or, or the uh, hot end which is here. This is the this is like an E3D V6 mount. Here is uh, the mount. Uh, th this is one mount here, uh, but I believe this one here requires a uh, it requires a Bowden tube to go down this way. So here's the Bowden in here. Yeah. So there's the Bowden tube there and little clamp and the gear for your stepper motor. Now, here's the deal. Um, I actually ordered another one of these. I ordered the um, BMG, uh, I think version one. So the version one 
doesn't have this really tight uh, tube here and therefore uh, flexible filaments could be a little bit problematic with this. I wanted the dual gear extruder because I want to have a really small small little pancake motor and then have a direct drive to the extruder or to the hot end and have all this as the mass that will go around the 3D printer to print. Uh, and I want to do flexible filaments, which is why it's important to have a dual gear and a really constrained filament path. So that's what this is all for. Now the version 1 is different to this. I ordered it on Amazon. I paid almost the same as this. I paid $4 less, but I wasn't happy with the quality. So I actually still have it here. I need to still send it back to Amazon. But uh, I'm glad I got this one instead. I think this one will be a lot better quality. And actually, it's uh, it's fairly well made. This is like fiber reinforced plastic. It's really nicely molded. Has a the tensioner arm is this this here, which controls the second gear. So yeah, I think this will be a better extruder overall. The gear meshing seems a little bit better. We'll take a closer look at this and compare it to the version one. But also, I got here uh, thermistors. These are able to go almost um, almost 300 degrees Celsius. And I got a five pack, they were like a dollar a piece. So that's pretty good. And all this was ordered from uh, Triangle Labs. Yeah, Triangle Labs on AliExpress. So yeah, let me zoom in and get you the V1 BMG. And I wanna show you the difference and why I got cold feet. I'm going to do my level best to keep this all in focus, but uh, yeah, this here is the V2, this is the V1. So you see the little notch there? That's the that's the easy way to tell them apart. Uh, they both have the little tensioner arm over on this side here like this, and if you split them apart, okay, this is all going to stay together. There's a little bearing in the cap right there that supports this arm here. And you see the constrained filament path there? If I open the other one, okay, this came, the whole assembly came out. I'm going to just pop the assembly into there. Okay, and so little bearing is there as well. If we take a look at the differences on the back half of two of them, you see this area on the V2 is way more open than this area here on the V1. And this here is actually where the little gear goes for the stepper motor. Stepper motor comes up through the back here, and that gear will be supported there. Not in a, actually it's not even supported. There's no bearing there. It's just going to be there. And then if we take a look at the filament paths, you'll see this one here is not actually restrained by anything. Um, I think the Bowden tube actually can come up through here and the Bowden tube comes up there through this V6 mount here. It'll come up sort of like this and end there. That's not as good as this guy here, which actually has the, the, the split for it. And yeah, there's the, there's the V6 mount on this one, and there's the V6 mount on the other one. I actually ordered a new V6 mount for the hot end that I'm going to get. And um, yeah, that hot end is fancy fancy, but it's not here yet, but it'll probably be the next package I open. And yeah, so this is the difference between the two. Uh, I believe the V2 is way better. I like that constrained filament path. Oh yeah, and you can see up here. Maybe you can't because of the lighting is pretty pretty bad. Let's see. Up here, anyways, there's like a, a pointy end and the filament is constrained again up here. Up here as well, but not as much. It's very it's very shallow. You see that point there is pretty shallow, and that point here, very sharp. So those those gears fit really tight up against each other and those points will all be close to one another. So this point and this point here and that should be good for soft filaments. 
you'll even see this is a nylon with glass fi fiber reinforcement. Like this is, this thing is, yeah, it just, it just wore into my nail there. So I think this is a higher quality unit and I paid $5 more, but I figured, I mean, what's the difference between $30 and $35 if it's going to be the extruder I'm going to use anyway. So this can also be mounted, um, sort of at a distance. It can be remote mounted with a long Bowden tube if you want, but that kind of wastes the talents of the dual gear extruders. So yeah, I'm pretty, I'm pretty excited to take a look at this and, and give it a run. I might install it on the low cost printer first to see if I can get a feel for it, but yeah, I think this is going to be a pretty good purchase. Let me know what you think. Next one up is this one here. I'm pretty excited about this one. It's been uh, held up in the mail for pretty long. Uh, November 11th uh, order date, December 21st arrival, $38.14. It is 3D printer parts and accessories. And it's certainly a 3D printer part if it's on this video. Oh boy. I just can't wait to see what this thing looks like. And there it is. This here. Can't tell if this is, uh, if these are stuck shut or if they have tape or something. I don't think so. There we go. This is a, a knockoff of the Slice Engineering um, hot end, the mosquito hot end. And at first glance, this thing is heavy, which is a good thing. Let me zoom you in so we can take a look at this thing a little bit better. So knockoff indeed. Um, so yeah, I was commenting on the weight of this and that's because this heat block here is supposed to be a uh, copper and this thing is really heavy, so it might be. Let's see if it's magnetic. It is not. Okay, so it doesn't mean that it's copper, but it definitely means it's not steel. And trust me, this thing weighs a lot. The real Mosquito hot end also does not have this uh, jam screw here for the heater cartridge. Uh, so I'm actually kind of happy because I don't have any of that fancy thermal paste that you're supposed to get. Um, let's pull the heatsink portion off here because in order for this thing to be a uh, sort of high-ish quality, um, this heat break in the very middle there, that, that tube, that needs to be uh, stainless steel or titanium. Now I'm not thinking that this will be a titanium hot end. I'm not that crazy to think that you get a titanium hot, a titanium heat break hot end for 40 bucks. But at the same time, this thing was not cheap. As you saw, it was, it was $40. The real slice engineering one is uh, like $200 or something thereabouts. Let's see if this comes out. Um, I'm not sure if it'll come out due to other reasons, but I'm also going to pull the nozzle out. Now this nozzle also should go all the way in and touch copper. It should bottom out on copper. If you look down there, I'm not sure if that's copper or not in there. Um, and also I want to take a look at the inside of here because this is a uh, an adapter, a V6 style adapter for a Bowden tube but I want it direct attached. So I don't know if that'll be, you know, feasible, but we'll see. Um, so I got the screws out. Now what is actually holding this together? It might just be press fit on these little tubes here. Be really gentle. If I break this, I'm gonna be really disappointed. Okay, so it's got these little tubes. These tubes are supposed to be stainless um, in order to prevent heat transfer through. We grab the magnets again. This is not stainless steel. Well, it could still be stainless, but it's not high grade stainless. Uh, and it's actually very thin walled. So there's that. This heat break here, 
Uh, it doesn't have any narrowing down here, which you generally see. This is also lightly magnetic, so this could be a low-grade stainless steel or not steel at all. This thing, though, I am nearly 100% sure is copper, which is fantastic. Tinned copper would be great, and the nozzle backs right into it. Now, this nozzle could be hardened steel, not sure, um, or it could be brass or it could be copper. Ooh, it is not magnetic. So it's aluminum, brass, or copper, or stainless steel. I'm not sure. I'm not sure how to tell a metallurgy, but that's pretty neat. These things, again, very lightly magnetic, but they are magnetic. Okay, and we can take the the adapter here, the slot mount. Now I think my 3D printer will use a slot mount directly into the BMG. So that's my plan, but I do have these holes here on the sides of the heatsink to mount to if I really want to. I want to take a look what this inside looks like. I ordered a replacement that's supposed to be uh, for direct extruding. Yeah, see how thick that is? So that's that's a pretty big, pretty unconstrained filament path, and I really want this to be a very direct filament path. So this is definitely aluminum. Um, this will dissipate a little bit of heat, but the main heat dissipator is this copper chunk here, and that should not be magnetic. Everything else on this bench is. Yeah, no, it's a bit attracted by this pipe here, but it's not really attracted by this at all. So that's copper. I believe this is copper. And I think this is a reasonable quality product for the price. I figured I'm going to build my own printer. It's gonna be you know, semi fancy. I want to have some nice parts, but I still like I can't afford a two hundred dollar Canadian uh, slice engineering hot end. That's for sure. Even though this kind has been shown to uh, have less heat soak, and it's all metal, so the potential to use exotic uh, filaments is there, as well as it having a fairly large block here and it's copper so it should keep its heat pretty well and so you just put the heater cartridge in there and it should be good to go. I'm going to tighten this up. I'm going to go get the heater cartridges and the BMG extruder and see if the whole thing fits together. And of course this uh, groove mount will be different at the time of installation but I mean, it's still reasonable, reasonably similar here. Put this in, slide it in. There we go. Uh, these are these stainless. These again, they have very light magnetism, so they probably are stainless steel. They use stainless steel because stainless steel does not conduct heat very well. So there it is assembled. Now, the whole principle of it is that you want this area as hot as possible, and you want this tube in the middle as cool as possible. And so that's the principle behind wanting a heat break that doesn't conduct a lot of heat, and having a heat sink on there in case it does. Uh, these all need to be tightened when it's heated, heated up anyways, but uh, so it'll be tightened again later. And uh, you can fit a tiny little fan on here, which is going to be part of the plan. Let me go get those other parts. We'll see how well they fit. And so here's the extruder, the BMG. Here's the thermistor. And if you remember, I had ordered accidentally uh, two sets of heater cartridges. So we're going to try both, see if they work. Because if only one type works, then there's no sense in using the other. This goes in, 
look at that. It's just a little bit, just a little too long, but that's, I think that's okay. Having that amount of stick out, but that fits perfectly. Didn't even have to loosen the screw. Let's try this guy. I think these are all E3D V6 compatible. So I don't think, I don't, I don't, I didn't think there would be a problem. See, that one's shorter. So it's kind of recessed in a little bit. I think I prefer the fit on the other one. That's good to know, because yeah, you see. Mm, or or this is perfect, I'm not sure. One of the two. This might be, the other one might be made to fit the actual um, slice engineering one. Because this knockoff is actually a little bit different. And um, didn't even notice, but in the bag came this silicone cover. It, that was not on the listing, so that's a, that's a bonus. That's pretty neat. Fits really well. Okay, let's peel off this. Uh, so this is the screw that prevents the thermistor from coming out. Don't think it does a particularly good job. The head's a little bit small on it. Okay. Like there was flashing in there. There's the thermistor. So if this thermistor is proper, then I'll probably be able to uh, give this a test run sooner rather than later. It does fit. It's a bit loose in there. I might need some sort of thermal adhesive or something to go in. It's not. It's not a proper fit. I do have. Um, I do have thermal epoxy, but then that, that'll be stuck in there forever, and I don't know if that's really what I want. But good to know it does fit, but I don't think I want it to fit so loosely. I was really trying to avoid uh, getting that uh, something nitride paste that you're supposed to get when you use these um, hot ends but I might need to get some anyways. There is a place locally, like within Canada, that sells them. So that's the screw there. And see, yeah, it doesn't do, it doesn't do anything to, to keep it from coming out. It comes right out. So either I bought the wrong thermistors, which is possible, or I really need that paste. And that paste is supposed to help transfer um, heat anyways, so yeah, I might have to get it anyways, so that's that. Let's try on the BMG No screws here. The only screws that hold this together are the ones that are um, in the stepper motor I'm gonna pull this out. So this is this here is the E3D mount and so this should fit right in there it does and you see it leaves a little bit of a space there. I think that's that's what we want to avoid is having this being bigger than what it's being fed from, which is this component here, that little flat thing. And then we'll fit this on here. Probably needs a bit of a wiggle to get in there. There we go. And yeah, if I, if I squeeze this tight, this is pretty tight. But in the case of a nozzle crash, uh, where the nozzle hits something, this will probably spin. Pretty neat though. Like, this is going to be the assembly. There's a little bit of a tensioner up here. There's going to be probably parts cooling fans going side to side. And one fan through here. So maybe two fans. One parts cooler and one um, hot end cooler. But that's approximately what the whole thing is going to look like. Plus, of course, a stepper motor here. And that'll be pretty neat, I think. And I think, yeah, I do have a lot of space to squeeze this. So once it's squeezed, ah, it goes kind of solid once it's squeezed. I might space it out with a little bit of Kapton tape or something in there just to make sure that it gets nice and crushed. But yeah. That is pretty neat. I'm pretty happy about that. So, yeah, I might just heat this thing up 
ahead of time and start squeezing filament through it and seeing what we end up with. But yeah, I'm, I'm thrilled. I'm so happy this thing is in. And this is my choice for my custom 3D printer. This is the hot end we'll be going with, with the silicone cover and everything. Next up is this one here, printer parts and screws. Uh, November 18th ordered, January 18th arrived, $4.33. Yeah, I'm probably gonna have to zoom you in for this one. Here we are all zoomed in, and now I'm probably going to take this stuff off camera because the zoomed in shots are a lot harder to get centered. Oh, you should put a dot like in the middle of the frame. Well, there goes that. So this is a uh, constrained filament path for the uh, this guy here. So this is the um, mosquito fake fake mosquito or whatever and this is the groove mount adapter for um, yeah a more constrained filament path what I'm concerned is I thought this would be um, thinner I thought it would be the size of filament but but it isn't it's thinner than this see that one has a big hole I don't want the big hole I really want um, something small so that I can print flexibles and the flexibles have nowhere to go Although I believe that if I use uh, this this cap, maybe I'll be able to fit a piece of Teflon in there. But let's see, you guys are seeing it live. Um, was that all that needed to come off? Yeah, there we go. Take this out. Okay, those are the two screws. There's that uh, hot end if you want to see that. I'm going to take these guys apart. And this guy should bolt right up. If I can fit a small piece of uh, PTFE tube in there, then I think I'll be happy with that. Because really, the, the point is, the opening here is so big that when you're forcing filament down here, down to this tube, um, if it's flexible, like Ninja Flex or TPU, basically, um, it might bunch up in the hole. So I specifically ordered um, this thing with a narrower opening so that stuff doesn't get in and tangled up in there. You can see the difference here. So this is the one that came with it. You see how that hole diameter is huge? This is the new one, much smaller, but also much bigger than 1.75 millimeter filament. I'm going to install this on and I'm going to see if maybe once it's on if it's resolved because I can put a piece of uh, PTFE tube because if I can stuff it with PTFE and the PTFE is going to be the exact correct size then I'm fine with that. If not, well I spent four dollars for nothing. This was uh, supposed to be a like a direct extruder groove mount adapter for the mosquito hot end. Hopefully these are the same thread. I'm actually not sure if that's the same thread. Oh no, they're not. Okay, let me go try to find some hardware. I think it's a deep to the rescue because I think these are M25. They're definitely not M3. So, are they? They are M25. These are Phillips head M25 screws. So the only problem is these are M3 holes. So that might be a challenge to line it up exactly in the middle. But that seems like a problem for another day. Right now, I'm anxious to test this out. I'm 
that one is screwing in properly. That one is screwing in properly. So now this is the problem here. There's a lot of wobble. So I brought a piece of um, PTFE. So this is actually from the BMG and that fits tightly in there. And now if I could push the heat break in, The only problem is now, if I push the heat break in, I won't be able to reach it. I might need to unthread this pipe. Is this unthread? Okay, this comes out. Okay, here's the plan. Heat break, uh, filament, PTFE, put this up through the hole. Everything should be lined up now, unconstrained. Tighten this up. And cinch it down quite hard. I should be able to pull this apart. And we go make sure it is well cinched okay there's a lot of pressure onto there now I'm going to reposition the heat break it's weird that the heat break doesn't actually isn't actually forced up in there so like this the four tubes stayed on this time that's good. Four tubes in. Reassemble these guys. I know this is riveting television. Um, see if I can use a hex for this. I rather like my high quality screwdriver set here. One and two. Cinch these down. I don't think I'm going to be pulling this apart anymore. Okay, now, if I have done this correctly, I should be able to put this into here. That's all the way in, and I should be able to feed filament through here. Now, obviously, my little bit of filament here isn't long enough, so I'll grab the roll, and I'll just feed this in, and if it makes it smoothly, from the PTFE to the heat break, it does. It goes in, it's all the way down into the heat break now. So if you look, this is in. I'm gonna hold it here, pull it back, and there's the length that it was in. So it was, yeah, well into the heat break. Good. So that's all lined up now. So basically all I need to do now is to chop this flush up here and then put this into the BMG extruder. And now this is the last part is to make sure that it fits in the BMG. This is the BMG with the constrained filament path. That goes up like that. I don't know if you can see way up in there, but you see how that little, this wedge keeps everything all the way up there. Now this should clip into here. Oh, it does seem like it. And should be able to pop this in like so. And if I squeeze this very tight, that can't even rotate. So, yeah, give the squeeze on it. This doesn't rotate. This should be perfect. So this here is, plus the little piece of PTFE that I'll have to put in here. That is the completed extruder assembly. Um, the bracket is going to be somewhere around this area um, with the stepper motor on the backside here. 
So I'll probably make a flat plate that goes between the stepper motor and this. And that's going to mount like this. Or I might mount it reverse. I might mount it from the front here. I have a lot of weight back there, but whatever. We'll, we'll figure it out. Point is, I now have, uh, I think, an ideal uh, all-metal extruder and or all metal hot end I should say and a direct drive extruder um, these things should provide accurate heating it should be actually this should be as good as it gets for a clone setup so that is pretty neat that being said I've got uh, one more item for today's mailbag so let me grab that now the final item uh, for this mailbag video, and I think the item that signifies now I need to get my butt going on these projects, is this one here. So this is Screw, is on the description. This was $19.37, November 23rd order, January 19th came in. So what could it possibly be when it's described like Screw? They are screws, quite literally screws. And uh, just again, these guys are going to have to be zoomed in. Oh boy, I didn't want to do that. I didn't want to scuff them up. I'm not sure how soft these things are. I know that the uh, these things are soft as all hell, but I'm hoping these are hardened. But yeah, I'm going to have to bring you guys in for a closer look at this so you can really appreciate the detail here. So what these things are is they are lead screws and these will be responsible for the z-axis of the 3D printer sort of in this orientation. They are 300 mils long, so uh, a foot long roughly, um, but what makes these so special is that they are super fine pitched. These are, um, there's only one millimeter between threads on these guys, whereas uh, typically a lead screw will probably have, um, that's a good question actually, I don't know how many um, th threads, how many uh, threads per millimeter or whatever that a typical lead screw will have, but I wanted the fine pitch stuff um, because I want to be able to um, print exotics. I also want to be able to print super high resolution prints. So, and these came with these um, brass nuts that, that fit them. They have a little bit of play. You see that? tiny little bit of lash to them. Um, that's okay. There are anti-backlash uh, lead screws uh, or uh, brass nuts, uh, which I can buy. I probably won't end up because the weight, the weight of the um, entire assembly, like the uh, glass bed, is going to be pushing down on this at all times. So I think it'll be okay. And also got two of these. So I might I'm not sure if I'm going to do uh, two and synchronize them with a belt or if I'll do a single one, but I knew if I wanted to do two at, at any point, I would want to have the two on hand and not have to wait forever. Um, so that's what these are going to be. Uh, so the finer the pitch, the more control you have over the layer heights, the, the potential, like the in, in theory, you should be able to get... Um, thinner layer heights, finer layer heights with a finer lead screw. Um, and when you add micro stepping and high quality drivers like I do, like I have for this project, um, that should equal pretty damn fine layers. I do have like 0.1 millimeter nozzles too. So hopefully this, this machine ends up being 
um, an extremely versatile and high quality machine. I figured I'm spending all this money anyways, I might as well build the best machine possible. And that's what this represents. Now the anti-backlash versions of these nuts, they have another section back here and a strong spring in between them. Um, I'm not sure if that's going to be necessary yet. That is yet to be seen, but for now, I think this is the last mechanical component I need. Uh, and so I have to start drafting up plans for a frame. Now, I'm probably not going to go aluminum extrusion for the frame, uh, simply because I don't think it's necessary. Since I have the linear rails, I can basically build the frame out of something rigid like tube aluminum, like square tube aluminum, and then put down the rails and I can shim the rails for, you know, sort of like waviness if need be, and I can square it up and everything without my frame being super square. So I think that's what I might end up doing. Um, I really wish I could laser cut uh, plywood or something to build the frame out of because that would be cheaper, but the laser cutter would be more expensive. So yeah, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this one of these screws next to my 3D printer and like my, my current 3D printer screw and I'll put it right there so you can tell just how fine this pitch is compared to a typical lead screw. So yeah, this is why this was 20 bucks, 10, bu 10 bucks a piece. It's not too bad because it comes with these little uh, brass nuts already and they are so fine. But yeah, this is the level of quality I'm trying to squeeze out of still relatively cheap Chinesium components. Hold the presses. One more box. Uh, this one came in. It was not identifiable from the outside and I didn't want to edit this video if it was another part for the 3D printer, which it is. So let's open it here. This is a stepper motor. Now, from here, it looks like a regular stepper motor, but watch this. When I pull it out, it is one of these stubby stepper motors. And the reason for that is that this uh, BMG extruder is a direct drive, and it uses a stepper motor mounted onto it. So that adds weight. So typically, a stepper motor looks like this. It's a big, fat thing. And I ordered a little skinny one to be a lot lighter. And the reason you can use a lot lighter stepper motor is because um, these things are geared. So it's actually, there's a gear reduction. So a little gear will come and turn this big gear here. That being said, I need to make sure this thing fits. So I gotta make sure these line up. They seem to. And then I gotta make sure that the gear fits onto this shaft. There's the gear. There's the shaft. It is a tight fit, which is perfect. But you need to, to unscrew this uh, little uh, hex here. This guy? Yeah, I think it's this guy. So that fits on there perfectly. There's a flat on the shaft. And line it up like so. I should be able to install this inside of here. And yeah, that fits just perfectly. Now, the reason why I wanted this little stubby stepper motor is because the weight savings should allow me to move the print head a lot faster without having any sort of overshoot or oscillation. And to prove that, I've got my scale here. Okay, and this new stepper motor with the wires, 121 grams. Don't know if you can see, uh, maybe just barely. And a regular NEMA 17 stepper motor uh, over like a hundred grams more. So basically I'm saving a lot of weight by going with this guy. 
and if it's still not strong enough for whatever reason then I can always just use another one of these so yeah this was about 10 bucks uh, it took just over a month to get here and so yeah I think that's the end of the 3d printer parts now and so that's it um, I could go get all the individual parts and stuff them all here so that um, we get a nice closing shot but honestly uh, they've all been put away in various sections where I put my projects away the only thing that's still on the bench is these guys that's literally the last thing I shot but that is the 3d printer in potentia so that being said my patreon patrons can now expect uh, slow but gradual updates on the design ideas the build and all of that of this massive machine um, and probably also you guys will see the building of the uh, super cheapo machine um, before this and on the way towards this so basically I've got a lot of work to do a lot of learning to do um, 2021 is the year of projects and it's probably going to shape up that there's going to be two 3d printers being built in 2021 the super cheap one which I've had parts in for a very long time and the I I wouldn't say super expensive it's still going to end up cheaper than Ender 5 um, but it's expensive in terms of initial investment, I guess, for something that's not even sure, completely custom. So, yeah, hope you enjoy this series. I want to thank my patrons so much for their support. You guys are awesome. Uh, I am pledging to update you guys more on what's going on. So when I finish uh, parts of the design or the build, I will give you guys uh, sketches or pictures or CAD files or whatever ahead of time. And for my viewers, uh, thank you guys for watching. Uh, hit that thumbs up if you like what I'm doing. Uh, and I'll see you in the next one. Have a good one.